Let's take a look at some important things you should remember to do before moving your app to production. This is often the final step before allowing your users to make use of your app. It can sometimes feel overwhelming because of how large of a list this can potentially be. Let's jump right in and take a look at a few things you can do to optimize your front end. So first, you should minify and concatenate your JavaScript and CSS. So if you're using any modern framework, there should be a package JSON file in there somewhere. If you take a look at the script section, there should be a command which should build your assets for production. So for Laravel, there's an npm run production command, which makes use of Laravel mix, which makes use of Webpack under the hood, and it should minify and concatenate your JavaScript and CSS for you. After it's done, these assets should be within the public folder, which you can push up to your server. When you're in development, you can just run the normal dev command or a watcher. And let's do that now. You'll see the file size for our JavaScript and CSS. So in this case, our JavaScript is 606 kilobytes, but if we ran npm run prod, that should be optimized and it should be smaller. And in this case, it's 89.4 kilobytes. So definitely make use of the build scripts that should come with whatever framework you're using. Next up, make sure your images are optimized. Images are usually the largest assets on your front end, and if they are not optimized, can lead to slow page load times. So I make use of this app here called Image Optim which can optimize your images in a batch, or sometimes I just optimize them within a graphics tool like Photoshop. I also go the extra step and make use of cloud services to host my images. I make use of Cloudinary to do this and also has a bunch of other features when it comes to processing images. Next up is to make sure you have a favicon. Favicon shows in your browser tabs and sometimes even in search results. So make sure you have this in place. Now it can be very confusing with the multiple sizes you have to provide. So just make use of some sort of favicon generator. I've been using this one recently called real favicon generator, and you can just provide it with an image and it will return a bunch of images that you can make use of for your favicon and also the code you need in the head tag. So let's take a look at the example they have here. You'll see it has previews for the desktop browsers and how they look in the default theme or a dark theme. And down here, you should be able to download the images. I think it generates the code first and then you can download the images. So here's the code that's generated and all the images should be in this package here, which you can download. Next up, make sure you have your open graph meta tag set up. So open graph meta tags are snippets of code that control how URLs are displayed when shared in social media. So they're different for each social media platform. So you can make use of a site like this, which summarizes all of the popular ones. So for example, Facebook, you have to put this within the head. For a Twitter card, you have to put this, and so on and so forth. I believe Twitter also has some sort of validator, which you can see how it should look if you have the tag set up correctly. So let's check out Laracasts. And you should be able to see how it appears when you tweet the link here. Next up, you should be running Lighthouse for site optimization suggestions. So if you're not familiar with Lighthouse, it's a tool that's built right into Chrome and audits your site for performance, accessibility, and best practices. So you can see you can do it for desktop or mobile, and it should give you some sort of score after you generate the report. And you can see the score generated here for these different categories. And if you scroll down, you can see a bunch of suggestions which you can take into account in order to potentially optimize your site and increase the audit score here. So just go through the list here and see if you can find any quick wins that are easy to implement. Next up, you should check if your site works and renders correctly on multiple browsers and mobile devices. Now, this can be as simple as opening up your site in multiple browsers and mobile devices and clicking around to make sure everything looks right. Or you can make use of a service like Browser Stack, which actually spins up real virtual machines so you can test your site in different browsers and different mobile devices. Next up, make sure you have some sort of analytics on your site for marketing purposes. This will provide you with useful information about your users and how they are using your site so you can optimize it accordingly. Obviously, Google Analytics is a popular choice, but over the last few years, privacy has become more of a concern and alternatives like Fathom have come up, which have heavy emphasis on valuing your privacy. Now, the rest of this list has to do with setting up servers and things related to DevOps. You might not have to worry about these if you have a dedicated DevOps person or a team. However, I'll mention them anyways in case you're primarily a solo dev and are responsible for the entire stack, including setting up servers. So obviously you're going to want to have a domain and you can purchase these at any domain name registrar. 
These registrars will allow you to manage your DNS records, which will eventually point to the IP address of your servers. Now, there are several ways you can set up your server. You can make use of Docker and containers. You can make use of serverless along with Laravel Vapor. Or for me personally, I just make use of standard Linux boxes with DigitalOcean. I also make heavy use of Laravel Forge for server management and to make sure my servers are provisioned correctly. Forge helps with a lot of server management details like setting up a database and making sure that your site has a proper SSL certificate for HTTPS. I also make use of Envoyer for zero downtime deployment. So you would hook this up to your Forge servers. You would define some scripts that run on the server, and then you should be able to deploy your sites with one click and zero downtime. Another thing I like to do is set up a staging server, which is pretty much the same as the production server, except this is where I would push my code first before I move it into production. So for example, if I wanted to show my client a new feature, I would send them to the staging site first, or if I wanted to verify with a designer that the designs are correct in the browser. So an example of this is the next version of the view documentation, which you can find at staging.viewjs.org. Now, this is sort of a preview to the general public of the next version of the view docs. And once it's marked as ready for production, then it will be merged to the main site at viewjs.org. Now, if you don't want the staging site to be public, you can easily add some sort of password protection like HTTP basic auth. Then you can share that password to the people you want to give access to. Now, after my app is on the staging server, I like to make sure that third party services actually work. For example, in development, you're probably making use of a service like MailTrap to preview your emails, but you're not actually sending them out. So once your app is on a server, like I said, make sure that your mailing service actually works. After your site is up on production and working correctly, you want to make sure that you have multiple database backups per day. I personally make use of a tool called Automatic, which like I said, has multiple automated database backups throughout the day. So in case of emergencies, when the database goes down, I can just roll back to the latest backup. And the last point that I have here is to make sure that you have some sort of uptime monitor for your website. So whenever your site goes down, you want to be notified as soon as possible so you can fix it. I personally make use of Uptime Robot, which has a generous free plan. Or if you need more features, you can check out another app called Odeer. Oh so yeah, those are just a few tips and optimizations you can do before moving your app to production. Some are essential, like setting up your servers and databases correctly but others can be added on after you launch your app to production, which is the most important thing in my opinion.